Hello, this is Dr. Rochard here, and you're listening to Topics in Addiction Medicine. Yes, I'm an addiction medicine specialist. What can I say? I also have a specialty in pain management as well as preventive medicine. But I'm here basically to share some of my experiences and encourage you to get the support and help you need to get better or more likely get better. What can I tell you? It's all an odds game. There are no sure bets in any aspect of medicine, but particularly when dealing with addictive disorders. So how can I help you? Well, it's not gonna be just information or facts. I'll, uh, uh, I know, I get it. Do you get it? <laughs> well, if you get it, you know when others get it, and patients know that I get it, and I get it when they get it, and it's a great thing to get it. And how does that come about? Well, it's not just a matter of knowing pathophysiology and the disease of addiction from a medical standpoint or caring for patients. It's actually working with people, understanding how the system works, the whole context in which this works, and human nature being what it is. So anyway, I hope with time you get it if you don't already. And if you get it, I think you'll see that I get it. Anyway, what do I want to share with you? Well, to start with, it's hard to know. But one analogy I give, and it comes up a lot, is, well, will the pair of glasses be adequate? By that, I mean, if I give you medicines, is that going to do the trick? You know, the pair of glasses, what do they do? They help the brain work better. And I want your brain to work better, of course. So I'm going to give you a pair of glasses. But in the end, it's not just a pair of glasses. You got to read stuff. You got to know what to read and how to read. And then your whole perspective on life, on what it is to lead life in a healthier way, hopefully will change. That's a robust recovery that I've got to wish for you. So it's not just the glasses. Now the glasses can be essential. And I mean that. In this disease, people die sometimes if they, they're not given the pair of glasses. By that I mean if they're not given medication assisted treatment for this disease. So it's essential to combine medical treatment in this disease. I'm not an either or type of guy. I'm a both and. And really in this disease, I really encourage you to, to get into the both and way of thinking. Not just this or just that, but a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You're just more likely to get where you wanna be. Yes, that's the name of the game, getting where you wanna be, okay? so. I'm here to give you some clues of what might help, but really more than anything is to empower you to seek help, look for outside input on a regular basis, and if you like being an informed consumer or patient, knowing what's more likely to work and what's not, and knowing when you're getting proper help. You'll know it oftentimes, but I'm just hoping this will encourage you and empower you to get that help and know what it is. So. What's an example of some behavioral support for someone with a disease of addiction? Opiate use disorders as an example. Well, let me start with this one. Let's not play the blame game. Do you know what I mean by that? It's, it goes something like this. How could they be so stupid? That idiot, do they have their head up there? You know what? Ah, oh, it drives me nuts. What's all that crud, okay? We're, we're, it's obvious, we're, a lot of us are irrational, the system's irrational, it's all a little crazy out there. Yeah, we're crazy, people are crazy, this is what way it is. All right, but let's get into solutions. But Because we, we spend all our time talking about what's all crazy and what we should do or shouldn't do or need, let's get into the solution. Let's figure out what that solution might look like. So that's an example of behavioral support. It's being aware that we can play that blame game and it doesn't get us very well. and uh, Very far, I should say. I, I don't know, however you want to want to say it. But I'm here to say, yes, we need to vent our feelings and our frustrations, have people that understand. <sighs> I sure do. And it helps. But come on, we got to get beyond that. We got to get into the solutions. So, one of the things that impedes us getting to solutions is all the dilemmas out there. 
we got all these dilemmas we have to deal with. Oh, do you know what I'm talking about? Well, next time at our next topic, I'm going to talk about some of the more common dilemmas that patients come in with, and I'm hoping to be able to help you or some loved ones with some of those dilemmas. By definition, we can't resolve a dilemma. But my experience is that with proper input and support, they just seem to fade away. That's the good news. And I want to share more of that with you. All right. Thanks for listening and your attention. Till next topic. Bye-bye.